This is going to be an interesting one. P.S. Morgan asks astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, is there a God? Listen to his response. Popular scientist in the universe ever, Professor Neil deGrasse Tyson, whose new book, just to do a bit of media sensationalism, man, Neil, his new book, uh, To Infinity <laughs> and Beyond, is, like is out this month. It's, uh, it's absolutely riveting. You write about this stuff so brilliantly. You bring it all so alive. Um, I want to go into a few things, but first of all, the key question for me with all this, especially when I was reading your book, how much do you think we know and how much do you think we don't know about what's out there? That's a great question. And uh, I can actually quantify that answer. So there, there are these things, there's dark matter you might have heard about. So dark matter is 85%. It's responsible for 85% of the gravity in the universe. And we have no idea what it is, but we can measure it. There's dark energy responsible for the accelerated expansion of the universe. We can measure that, but we don't know what's causing it. And then you add up all of these sort of what these forces are doing in the universe. It's 96% of what's driving the universe. Mm -hmm. And all the forces of nature that we know and love, gravity, uh, electromagnetism, the strong and weak nuclear forces, life, chemistry, biology, physics, that's in 4% of the universe. So hmm. we know enough about the universe to, know to nothing. quantify our ignorance. So we know 4% of what's going on out there. But also keep in mind that as the area of our knowledge grows, so too does the perimeter of our ignorance. And that is the very soul of science, that there are questions. People say, what questions do you want answered? Yeah, I don't think that way. I think, what question do I not even yet know yes. to ask? Yes, I think that's the really because interesting part, is that you're probably not even the thinking of, of the all. great question, right? Because there may be something Correct. so... Correct. I, I, I lose sleep over that, yes. Now, how, you're, I know you're an avowed atheist. How can you be so certain that there is no supernatural, mm -hmm. godlike entity out there, given that we know so little? Well, first, I, I don't count myself among the ranks of avowed atheists. And I, I'll, tell, I'll give a fast <laughs> example why. A friend of mine went up to fix the Hubble telescope, okay, on the space shuttle. And on my, on my, on my Facebook feed, I said, uh, Godspeed to the space shuttle astronauts. And then in the comment thread, it said, I thought you were an atheist. How could you possibly say <laughs> that? Good. And yeah. so the fact that I gleefully said that and atheists complained about it, clearly I'm not an atheist. Okay? What are you? My favorite, uh, my favorite Broadway musical of all time is Jesus Christ Superstar, which I saw in <laughs> real time in New York City. I, I don't know that atheists can. So, I don't, so is there a know, God I then, Neil deGrasse Tyson? I'll be about to have breaking I, I news. I don't know. Is there a God? Okay, so, what so I will tell you is that with there are a lot of unknowns in the universe, but just because there are unknowns does not mean there's a deity in the unknown. If you're going to assign doesn't a mean deity there isn't. to that which... It doesn't mean there isn't. That That's what he said. We know so much to know that we are ignorant of a lot more. So That's yeah. correct. So you're more well, of an open mind about this, right? I, everyone should. If the, the unknown is the unknown. But the, 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 the track record of people saying God is behind this and then you add a little science to it and you find out no, we can completely explain it and control it, then that the history of that exercise is so rich with science discovering the unknowns that were previously ascribed to deity, like lightning bolts and weather systems. Mm. There was Poseidon, there was Zeus, there was, just look at the history of this. Mm. I'm, I'm not given reason to say, we're gonna find something, God is gonna be at the center of that and there'll be no science to apply. I'm gonna look for the science first because that's how the history of this exercise has unfolded. But the argument would be if God created the universe, then he won't be in the universe. So finding God in the universe would not be possible. Because if you created the iPhone, you're not in the iPhone. You're outside the iPhone, which would mean the components looking for other components in the iPhone or the creator of the components in the iPhone is not possible. I don't know if that makes sense. So yeah, God has to be outside to make it. So looking for him inside wouldn't be logical, right? No, I want to play you a clip. This is you talking to Joe Rogan about vegans. If you want to save animals, um, I, I never seen, I've never seen anyone say, save the leeches. 
No, no one cares about bugs. Save the ticks. And you can ask, if you're really into animals and don't want to kill them, if you heard that ticks were endangered, would you start a movement to protect ticks? Unless would you do that? And if you would, more power to you. But I'm thinking you're not. They're not. It's the little guys they don't care about. I've had this debate with <laughs> vegans. I had one last week. I have it every month. And I always point out, most vegans I know munch away on almonds and avocados and they turn a blind eye to the fact that this causes the mass murder of billions of bees, mainly in California. They don't want to have that debate because <laughs> they don't care about the little guys, Neil. <laughs> my, my, my only reaction there is, um, that comment was addressing only vegans who are vegans because they don't want to kill animals. Yes, no, there I agree. Other reasons to be vegan, of course, right, for health or the environment. No, no, I'm talking or, specifically. But those who didn't one, want to kill the ones who run into steak houses playing sounds of cows being slaughtered. They're the ones that munch avocados and almonds invariably. Yeah, and by the way, and they are dining upon the reproductive organs of plants. That's yes. kind of weird. And I imagine if if an, if a if a plant based alien visited Earth. They would freak out when they saw vegetarians yes. <laughs> because the vegetarians would be eating them, right? And 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 vegetarians target um, not only the reproductive organs, the nuts, the berries, the flowers, but they also target the infant versions of it, with baby lettuce, baby carrots, baby. Oh my this God. is this would terrify a plant-based <laughs> alien. So that's just a cosmic perspective on that. No, diet. no, you've I, given me, all. you have I, given I, me a whole new line of attack. Matter. The, the, the flower babies. I love it. This is fantastic. Uh, I, I, I just, they, I find these... That's, wait, that's dangerous. If, if It's dangerous to feed you more lines of attack because I don't know what you're going to do with it. No, but I always like to take these things to their... Debates to their logical end, right? I mean, and it seems to me they, when it suits them, they care about the bigger animals, the cuddly ones, but when it comes to the little guys, they're not interested. Um now, I want to talk yeah, about the furry, something... the furry ones especially. Something even more iconic, actually, than God or vegans, and it's your moustache, which has become one of the world's most famous moustaches. And here's the story. <laughs> There's a whole website that's been set up called DeGrasse Tyson's Moustache. Really? And we did a bit of research ourselves, a bit of scientific research, uh, and there's a, a, a moustache montage that we have here, which is quite extraordinary. It, it turns out almost every brilliant scientist has had a magnificent tash. Uh, Nikola Tesla, the inventor extraordinaire, oh. great tash. Louis de Broglie, the discovered the wave-like nature of all matter, great Jude. tash. Uh, and Geiger, famous for the Geiger counter. Robert H. Goddard built the first liquid-fueled uh, rocket. And of course, Albert Einstein, probably the one nearest to your own, um, you, I mean, you've become the modern day godfather of science moustaches, but very much <laughs> running in a sort of a, a great long historic list of great tashes. How about Steve Harvey? I, 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 I never thought about it. Th this moustache, I've never shaved it in my life. Yes, I've trimmed it, but it's ever since I could grow a moustache, I've had a mustache, so uh, mm. it's just part of my life. And even it was kind of out of style a few years ago. And I, so I was a little bit, I did get rid of my mutton chop sideburns. <laughs> I figured, okay, that's from 1978. I could lose those, but I, I did keep the mustache. But if I were to vote among those mustaches, yes. I would say, you know, we remember Einstein as this wire haired, yes. you know, gray, big bushy eyebrows, but he, he was a dashing young man. You see him in a tuxedo. Uh, yes, look at that mustache. That's like a Magnum PI mustache right there. If you could, final so, question, Neil. If you could have dinner tonight with any scientist in the history of recording mankind, who would it be? Yeah, it would be, oh, no question about it, Isaac Newton. But I think about that all the time, and I'd say, Isaac, come for dinner. And he'd look out the window, and he'd see these things moving. He said, what are those? And I'd say, well, they're horse-drawn carriages without a horse. He said, well, how do they move? Well, they use gasoline. What's gasoline? Oh, it's fossil fuels. What's fossil fuels? And after five minutes of this, i say, go back to where you came from. <laughs> also, unfortunately, you your really answer... There's so much that. that has happened since then. Well, your answer is completely... I don't killed... know if I have the patience. Well, you killed my theory also, because Isaac Newton famously was clean Shaven. Oh, <laughs> well, 
Well, um, Newton, we, we see him with these big locks of curls, but I think that was actually a wig on top of much shorter hair. And uh. the statue of him in Cambridge, at the, in the, uh, Trinity in, a Church in Cambridge, mm. um, it's, you, shoot, you see him with short hair. Wow. So I was so disappointed when I heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> Neil, I could honestly interview you every single day and it would never get boring. You've got a fantastic way of bringing this stuff to life. To infinity and beyond, a journey of cosmic discovery. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Lindsay Walker. It's a number one New York Times bestseller, as all your books are. It's a fantastic reading. Great to have you back at Uncensored. Thank you. Yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's a very intelligent man and also he's funny, he's happy, playful, jovial and the way he laughs. Even just laughing without saying anything is going to get you interested in him. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I didn't like was he made a comment about, um, was it tra transgenderism? His comments at that time was kind of awkward. and Like, he didn't get to to the point. But he, I would call him some slack there because he's not a professional in that aspect. But according to geography and, you know, where his field is at, I feel like he gives very good points. I learned something from him the other time that, you know, kind of replaced my mind a lot where he says, the skin of an apple is to the apple what the atmosphere is to the earth. I don't know if you guys have seen that video, but that kind of like tells us a lot more about um, ozone layer depletion and, you know, all the things we need to do to the atmosphere to get it right. Anyways, this is the end of this video. Feel free to share your thoughts. If there's anything you want to add, correct or critique, please let me know in the comment section. That being said, smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a wonderful day. Peace.